We are currently in Kings Langley. And the reason we're here is basically we come to meet a young gentleman called Steve. And about three weeks ago, this fella here, Steve, he sent us a message and he said, morning lads, I'm happy today. I'm about to go to the police station to get my tools that were stolen a year ago. Hello guys, I was wondering if you can give me a shout out. It's uh, Stephen from SB Multitrade. Currently on my way to Southampton Police Station to hopefully collect my stolen tools that were stolen out of my van last Ooh. year. Hi. Been an up and down roller coaster. Hopefully we can all get back up and going. But without you boys, I wouldn't be where I am today and it wouldn't have kept me going, I'll tell you that now. Thank you. Half hour, 45 minutes later into the show, we get another message from Steve. The police wouldn't let him have his tools. Steve just sent us another message in saying that he couldn't get none of his tools back because all of the serial codes have been scratched off the tools. So then when he got there, he couldn't identify what his tools were, if they were his ones. Them. He couldn't prove it. He said, what a waste of journey and a long journey now to replace all of my tools. It's a nightmare. I've got baby number three on the way and I'm having to turn down work due to not having the equipment to do the job, bro. So he's losing money. Terrible, Oh, this is this is the problem with stuff, man. Losing money, losing tools, losing jobs. This is a joke. Do you know what, Steve, right? Um, if you don't mind, I'll get your number off producer John. Mm -hmm. And me and Sam, we're going to ring you after the show. Yes. All right? And we're, we're, we'll get together and we'll see what we can do. So, Steve thinks we're down here today to have a breakfast with him, just to have a chinwag and have a chat. But it's not. No. We've reached out and we've got a company which is supporting this cause. Yes. How Tools. And in the back of our van right now, we have got what I'd like to say a life-changing, a life-changing gift for yes. any person that has had their tools stolen. So you can imagine, in a minute, we're going to have a camera set up in there. We're going to say, come to the van. We want to interview you. We want to see, tell us our story, your story. And then we're going to open the van up. And then all of a sudden... My man is getting kitted up with basically most of what he lost. We sent the list to Hal. Mate. And they, with the help of the wall, have supplied that. There's five grand worth of tools right there. Do you know what I mean? And how tools with the wall, at no cost to us, have give us all of that stuff. And when you hear the story from Steve, you'll understand how deep it goes, actually. And you'll understand the reason why we're standing here and we put our time and effort into doing it as well. Do you know what I mean, Sam? Because a lot of people lose their tools. Yeah, yeah. But if you lost your bag of tools now, yeah. you're in a position to go and buy another bag of tools. Yeah, this is different. This was a different thing. You ready? You ready? Everyone ready? I'm ready. Come on in. We jumped in the motor and we drove to the local cafe to go and meet Steve. We then sat Steve down so he could tell his story. Last year, had a uh, sticky situation in life. Me and the missus separated, and I moved out of the house, uh, ended up living in a hotel, doing my day-to-day -day working as normal. And a friend of mine rang me up, and he said, what are you up to tonight? I said, nothing much. He said, get your best clobber on, we're going uptown, we're going into London. Brought the van back, went out on a night out, come back, went up to my hotel room, and I thought, oh, I need my charger. So then I went down to my van to get my charger out. The screw box was on the floor. I thought, so I never opened the sliding door. So as I approached it, I started questioning myself. I started thinking, oh, maybe I did, da, da, da. And as I see the van slide the door, I see the small incision. And instantly I knew straight away, I opened the door up to find everything that I've ever worked for over the last 10 plus years, building my old equipment up, had gone, vanished. When I ran into the office, I called the police, the van's been turned over, we looked at the CCTV. It took him 22 seconds from the moment of his chisel or screwdriver, whatever he used, to the sliding door to it opening was 22 seconds. It makes me sick thinking about it, but to see your equipment just walking away, just been struggling, borrowing tools or friends to keep going, having to turn away work because I haven't got the equipment to do the work. Because everything I've ever worked for over that whole 10 years had just been taken away from me in the blink of an eye. It felt worthless. I felt there was no need to be here no more. It's quite a low stage, quite a low stage. I felt I had no one to talk to. I felt I had just no purpose. I, had, I was nothing. I nearly took my own life. I found myself sitting at the top of a car park. Nothing goes through your head when you're in that moment of low. You feel there's nothing that can help you. No one that can help you. Nothing you say will change. You feel that is it. That is the bottom of the hole. You can't dig any further. It's horrible. It's horrible. My phone vibrated. I just pulled my phone out and looked and it was a load of gobbledygook, a load of random letterage. Didn't make no sense, but I knew it was my son off my partner's ex-partner's phone at the time. 
um, that had messaged me. And that was, that was my wake up call. That made me go, what, what are you doing? You've got family around you that's, that depend on you, that need you. Just because you ain't got no money, just because you ain't got no work and you're in that hole, doesn't mean they don't love you and they don't need you in their life. And it's an easy escape for me at that time. But it's a harder challenge for them. So that, that's what woke me up and that's what took me back off that edge. A year later, uh, there's a Facebook, uh, Instagram page called Stolen Tools UK. And I see they had posted up a photo of Hampshire Constabulary's uh, post saying they've recovered a load of stolen tools, which I instantly clocked what my equipment was. So I contacted them. He said, come down and have a nose. That morning, I was driving down to Southampton. I got all happy, thinking I was getting all my gear back. I thought I was gonna, my life was getting back together. Went into fixed radio, sent him a voice note, saying I'm on my way, we're hey, all jolly. We went down, a lot of the serial numbers were scratched off, which I knew they were my tools. Couldn't do nothing about it. I couldn't claim them back because there was no way of fully identifying those tools. I was listening to the radio that morning and Brad and Sam said they were gonna contact me, which they did. I followed them right from day dot when they first started off doing all their pranks. And they said they wanted to meet up and have a bit of breakfast. Um, lo and behold, we've had a bit of breakfast. Been told to come to the van to do a bit of filming and I've opened up to see all of this beauty to bring me back on my feet. After a good chat, this is the moment we surprise Steve with his new tools. What's all that? That's all yours, my brother. Oh, shut up. <laughs> That's to get you back on your feet and go and earn some money for you and the family, mate. I'm fucking shaking. Shut up. <laughs> Everything you need, we went through the list that you gave us when we was talking about it, and listen, it ain't, it's probably 90% of what you lost there. There's gotta be some items that ain't there, but that will definitely get you on your way and help you take on some good work. <laughs> Come on, brother. You see. Come on, brother. That's you. I want to cry, but I don't want to cry. I don't want to look like a <laughs> Do you know what we did? We reached out to our friends at How Tools and we told them your story when we spoke to you on radio after when we, rang, when we rang you and we told them the story and honestly they said, what can we do to help? Send me a list of what you need. So I went back through our chat and we recorded it and I picked the bones out of it and I said, that's what we need. No questions asked, they said no problem at all. They delivered it straight to us within a week. You've got a stand in the back there, there's a chop saw there, there's first fix, second fix now. Oh, um, mate. Big grinder, small grinder, router, impact drill, there's a hammer drill underneath there as well in the box. There's a load of goodies, there's a stack system, what you were showing me a minute ago. And you can add to it, man. So this is this is to get you going again, start you on your journey, and then slowly just build the rest up over the next couple of years or so. I told you, when you do good, good comes. I oh, fucking can't believe it. I'm waiting for someone to wait. I'm waiting for someone to wake up or something. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Let's grab them out. Have a play with the tools, brother. They chucked in loads of accessories. You've got some blades, you've got drill bits, you've got some router bits. I don't know bits. how much this fucking means to me. Honestly, I can't explain it, guys. Like, seriously, you just helped my family. Like, you're going to do it now. You've helped my family. Yeah. Like, you've got to do the work, man. It's for you now, isn't it? It's for you now to go and get some work and... I mean, it's got fucking work, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst thing in the world, nicking a man's tools. And then when you went to see him at the police it's station... It's a low, low. And they was there... It's yeah. A low, a low. Yeah. Listen, going out, doing a little bit of this and doing a little bit of that. Never nick a man's tools, because that's how he feeds his kids. Oh, man. <laughs> this is unreal. At first, I thought I was getting a wind-up, um, but it turns out I'm not. And now I've been greeted by loads of tools and equipment that are going to help me massively, and my family mainly, get back to a level where we can be financially stable again. Get back up on my feet, and now I've got all this equipment I can take back on the bigger jobs now and hopefully succeed again. I can't thank enough. Thank you isn't good enough to say to these lads and what they've done to help a small business hopefully get bigger again. If, if you're ever at that low point where you feel there is nothing else that can help, talk. We all think we've got to be that manly, hard figure. We can't talk about anything, we've got to get on with life not enough men talk to each other. That's all they need to do, is have a chat. Because that person you may chat to randomly, in the pub, in the caf, on site, wherever you have a chat with someone, that person may have that solution or may be able to help in some way to help you get back up. Yeah, it's low. It's a horrible, dark, gruesome, lonely road when you get to that level. But this is proof that there is always light at the end of that tunnel 
and keep running towards it. It's all you can do.